the Crazy Town Podcast. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT. I don't like the explosive one. Let's crack into another one. Hey, so TNT. Yo. Um, did you... I, I think you do know about the Wu-Tang Clan secret album. It's not really a secret, but like... It's the like the rarest piece of music in the world, supposedly. The one that Martin Scarelli, the uh, the farmy, the pharmacist yes. guy. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. Um, they created an album, uh, Once Upon a Time in Shaolin, and they and Martin Scarelli ended up who was like the farmer bro who jacked up. I think it was what was it, diabetes medicine or something. Yeah. Up ridiculous. Went to jail for fraud, like whatever. Yeah. They they basically they recorded this album. I don't remember what year they did it. Not that long ago. They made one copy. Yep. They destroyed the master. They ha- it's like, it has this like elaborate case, yada, yada, yada. Pharma bro owned it. Honestly, one of our early NFT, right? To a certain well, extent. I, that's funny that it ties into that because yes. okay. I'm getting to that. So basically what it was was like the, the stipulations of this album were that uh, no one could make money off the album. Yeah. Because he, he bought it for $2 million. No one could make money off the album till the year 2103. Wow. So like, so like, we'll all be dead by the time this album is available uh, to be listened to. Yeah. So but what I, happened was uh, Farmer Bro was forced to to give it up because he uh, he had to owe a bunch of money for uh, for the fraud he committed. Mm-hmm. And a company is called Pleaser Dow. Like a Dow. Are you familiar with what a Dow is? D D A O. I don't explain it for the listeners it's at home. It's essentially like a company. It's a community and they fragment things like they kind of like and like if you own it, you can vote on like stuff to happen, almost like governance. Like you can vote on things to happen. Like they're saying, do we want to do this thing? And everyone, every piece you own gets a vote, like blah, blah, blah. It's so like, you're like on the board for the company. Kind of. Right? And I mean, granted. So anyway, so they bought the album. Mm-hmm. And what's really funny about it is it goes, it kind of goes back to the GameStop thing we were talking about last week. Okay. So in th- there was a picture of when they bought it. Like it was everyone that works for Please or Dow and they had the album in front of them with the case open. Mm-hmm. And there was one man standing backwards in a black hoodie with his hood up. Like like a anonymous person. And uh well and and people started speculating that it was Ryan Cohen, the CEO of GameStop, was involved in buying this. Because he's a billionaire. He started Chewy. He has money. Yeah. Be- because in other pictures he posted online, he was wearing like the exact same hoodie, like the same like lines, like, okay. you know, there was like very unique stitching, like whatever. Anyways, so people were always like, the, in, they're going to like give away this album as like for GameStop holders, like da, 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 like hold this whole thing about like, cause like, huh. cause like, cause basically what the, what the, the rumor online was, was cause what happens is if you short a stock and they pay a dividend, you have to pay the dividend for every one that you have borrowed. Yeah. But if you have something that has basically no value, you can't pay cash for it. So you're fucked. You have to buy it back at any cost. Absolutely. So it's been a rumor online for like years with the, through this whole, and there's Wu-Tang's come up numerous times. So the company that owns the album just, just recently started talking about, um, 2103 is coming sooner than you think. Like, so all this stuff they, and then basically what was in the stipulations of the album was that you could play it or snippets of it, like at like a listening party, but no one could have their phone to record it. You couldn't like sell it. So you could like play it so people could listen to it. So what they did is they first, they, they, they took it on like a little tour. They took it to the original temple that the Wu-Tang clan ha- went to in Brooklyn to take the photo of their very first album. Okay. And they like, literally like took it there and let people come there from Brooklyn to come. And they were like playing the album in there. Wow. You could come in for a certain amount of time and like take pictures with it and like all this stuff. Okay. Um, so, and like it was, they posted pictures online about it. It was actually kind of cool. It was like, Oh shit. And people yeah, were like, yeah, like yeah. this shit is fire. Like this, this is actually a really good album. Like, uh, you know, so why would they do that though? I uh, mean, artists, so artists then art. they have now announced they are selling what what they're going to do is they they've came to an arrangement with the Wu-Tang Clan and the people who created it. They're they are selling essentially NFTs of this album fragmented. Every one costs a dollar. Every one purchased reduces the time to release by 88 seconds. So when so when they sell enough fragments 
anyone who owns the NFT will have access to the album online. The weird part is they because you could buy you could buy them for a dollar through like your crypto wallet, whatever. The weird part about it that they've announced is if you they are also giving every person who owns GameStop stock this for free. Oh. And like, but the funny thing is the comp GameStop, the company has not said anything about it. So they don't acknowledge that they haven't yet, but okay. so like GameStop has their shareholders meeting. It was supposed to be on Friday there and it got postponed because of technical difficulties. Like they couldn't live stream. Okay. So now it's going to be out on Monday, but, but GameStop has not acknowledged this at all. Huh. But the company is set like, so basically what you need to do is, and I haven't looked into it yet, but like somehow like you can verify through your broker, like you sign in through your broker and it verifies you have the shares and then you probably give them like a wallet address and they send you the NFTs like that. Like it's called an airdrop, but it's really weird that that has been like kind of like a thing for like a while. And then now they're segmented in this album, selling it as NFTs. But here's the thing. Now it has a monetary value of a dollar. So it's not going to have the effect that everyone thought it was because does it have a monetary value of a dollar or because you only get a fragment you, you get a share of it right but if it's a one for one every share you get a dollar thing then that's really all they would have to buy back anyways um yeah. but i don't know like so it's really weird it's kind of cool i mean i uh i mean i have a crypto wallet i'm gonna buy i mean i have i have some gamestop stocks so i'll get some for free anyway but i'm gonna buy one for a dollar because i'm very interested like when they finally make enough money off of this Bro, can to, we, to listen to that album. Can we use it in a YouTube video? I don't think so. I think we can. No. How are they going to know? Because How is the algorithm going to know that we're playing copyrighted information if it's never been submitted but, as uh, copyrighted? But the other piece to this is... Uh, Mark, we could have exclusive freaking... Come on, do we go viral? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Sorry. So Martin Screlly also, when they started talking about this, went online and said that he had made a copy of the album. Of course. It. And of course. So they, Release it. they sued him. They sued. They have proof of him talking about that. He has it. And like, now they sued him for breaching his contract with the album. And like, so he's oh, probably cause he wasn't allowed to make copies. That's part of the agreement. There's one copy. You can't make copy. You can't digitize it. You can, like, you have a CD and they actually, what was really kind of cool is they played it through a Wu Tang PlayStation one. That they got that came hey. out when this game came out. That were yeah, because I guess there was a Wu Tang Clan edition yeah, yeah. PlayStation yeah, One. Yeah, 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 so they was. played the album through the Wu Tang PlayStation One That's at the awesome. event, like or whatever. So That's I don't awesome. know, man. I mean, I don't know what your take is on that, but like, what do you think about that? It's that, kind of, bro, that that was a freaking roller coaster ride. You took me on there because I had <laughs> no idea any of that was going on. So I was honestly, I'm I'm reacting with everybody at all. Look, that's crazy, but awesome at the same time. Like I said, artists are going to art. So while I'm thinking, like, why would the Wu Tang Clan release music that nobody will hear? It seems kind of crazy, but like you can't really put anything on an artist. That is the vision they had. They made money off of it, and now it looks like on the back end they're making even more. Yeah, I think somebody figured it out. It's like twenty eight million dollars or something. They're gonna make off all the like the amount of NFTs they need to sell to, to remove the eighty eight seconds at a time to get it to current day for release. It's funny because the that that integer goes down like every second that we're alive. It's kind of yeah. crazy, yeah, but yeah, yeah. It, like, yeah, something like that. So like, eventually, they will meet up. So I don't know. Yeah, and the more people who people buy are... it, you know, and once and once word spreads a little bit about it, like people like music heads are going to want to get in on that because especially you know the, the Wu Tang has a big following for one. People hip hop culture, you know what I mean? Like people mm -hmm. who review music, they're going to want it to be able to review it, and they can't play it, but they want to talk, you know? Yeah, and like the whole idea of nobody can make money off of it. I love that because uh, you know. Like, I mean, we, we ain't going to make any money off. Yeah, of we ain't making money off it anyway. So, but yeah, I don't know. It's awesome. Very awesome. Good luck to the Wu-Tang Clan. I mean, I, I kind of like it, but on the same note, I'm like, it kind of takes a person to be locked into that, that spectrum, that world in order to get it. I myself have GameStop stock, stock as well, but like. I don't know if I'm going to go through my broker and everything trying to figure out how to get a freaking 30 second snippet of a Wu-Tang track. No, I think, no, I think you get the whole album. 
You get the whole album. Yeah, you have access to the yeah. You have access to the album when it's released by have you have, uh, you're a partial owner of it. Oh, shizzle twits, dude. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, so that's if, crazy. if I figure it out, I'll let you know so you can hook it. I don't know exactly what you have to do, um, but I just I have a crypto wallet, so I'm just gonna like buy one through the crypto wallet. I mean, so. well, if you get it, I get it. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so yeah. I mean, no, I can't share it. That's part of the thing. I, I mean, yeah, absolutely me. not. So I'll but, uh, get my own. But no, man, I'm, I'm interested. Stuff. I'm not even that big of a wu-tang i mean i like the wu-tang clan but it's yeah. not like i listen to all their albums all the time or anything no like, but it, it's like and like i say it's it's kind of got that value it's been upped in value through scarcity so it, it's a very cool idea for an artist though i i don't know man i feel like i would value getting the art out there over essentially making it rare scarce and just trying well but what if you made it and it was money. ass I mean, but you said it wasn't. I mean, you that's what people, people say, but maybe they're just like, you know, people, you know, they're just hyping it up. It's the Mona Lisa, man. Is it really that good or is it just because it's rare? Right, exactly. Like, if you've ever seen the Mona Lisa in person, people say that it's, like, it's not that. It's like it's, having sex with me. Because it's <laughs> it's like very small. It's smaller than what most people think. And it's just like, it's like, all yeah, right, it's a, it's like it's a people, lady's face. People hear about having sex with me, but few have. So like they're all like, oh god, <laughs> like this must be wild. Nah, Joe, just put it down in the bedroom. I've heard, I've heard tales. <laughs> You've heard all the stories. I've heard tales. Oh my god, you read my memoirs on the internet? I did not. <laughs> but I am going to look them up now. I'm gonna look you up on Backpage. <laughs> oh Jesus, that's that's a callback. All right, uh, that's all the time we have for today's episode. Go to crazytown.com for Jonas. TNT. Oh yeah.